Jeez. Okay. Very right. good. So what I'll do is, all right, I, I'll take care. All right, very good. Angelo, I just admitted um, two more people. Oh, you did? Yeah. All right, in, in case, I'll just go, I'll just go back and, and we'll go out of order if we have to. And this is Catherine Sharifanovich. Hey, I'm Catherine, in the meeting, you? but can't see. That's okay. You don't want to see what we look like. <laughs> right. I'm, uh, I'm going to go. Guys. I've just I've just muted everyone in the meeting. Uh, please only unmute yourself if you need to speak. Um, people on the phone use uh, star six to mute and unmute yourself when you Thank need you. to. Thank you for that, Jason. Thank you. All right, it's it's 10.06 a.m. And um, I will I, I'm going to call the meeting to order. And if there's participants that should be in the meeting that come in late, I will go back to um, any missed agenda item. So good morning, everybody. It's June the 17th, another version of our virtual Commission of Pharmacy meeting. My name is Angelo DeFazio. And we do have some news before we do start the meeting today. Our board is typically made up of seven members, two of which are from the lay community. And those two positions have been unfilled for a couple of years now. It wasn't filled under the Malloy administration once longtime E.D. Goodmaster Commissioner retired. And, but we have great news today that, uh, that someone that is familiar to our board, the, whose learning curve won't be that great as a lay person, Brian Caffarelli, who's also an attorney, who has some experience in this pharmacy arena. Welcome aboard, Brian. We're so happy to have you and to bring our commissioner um, total to six out of seven. I think you'll be a great addition and we're very excited to have you. Good morning. Brian? Mr. Chairman, I think, am I unmuted now? Yes, yeah, you're, you are. You're unmuted, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Welcome aboard, well, thank, Brian. Thank you very much for those kind words. I'm very excited to be here and get to work with the commission. Um, it's, a, it's a great honor for me, and I, I look forward to it. Thank you. And, and what I'll do, Brian, along the day, because um, I know you're familiar with the legal aspect and the legal matters of our board, but you probably weren't present or have a little unfamiliarity with the other parts of it. I'll, I'll just um, tutor you along on what's going on on those particular pieces. It'll be a lot easier when we're in person. So if I talk too much today, just tell me to stop. <laughs> okay, I appreciate it. Thank All right. You. All right. So typically, Brian, what we do is we um, we announce ourselves for attendance. We say our name and our position as a commissioner. So we're going to start with you and then we'll go our typical order after that with Kristen. So if you'd like to identify you by name, identify yourself by name and and identify yourself as a commissioner. And then after Brian, we'll move on and do our usual Kristen from the left, working our way to the right, to Debbie and then to Heather. Okay, commissioners, um, Brian, you're on the floor. Thank you, uh, Brian Caffarelli, commissioner. Kristen and Lender, commissioner. Marian Guanti, commissioner. Angelo DeFazio, commissioner. Rick Carberry, Commissioner. Debbie Chisholm, Commissioner. Heather Hoynes, Board Administrator. Welcome, everybody. Um, I know this is a little unorthodox, so please bear with us, um, in particular with the applications and the relocations. I know the commissioners do a great job of, of studying them, looking them up, and getting all their questions in order beforehand. So let's start with uh, new pharmacy applications. Corporate pharmacy is Mohammed, and I apologize if I mispronounce your last name, Ishtik in the house. Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mohammed. Um, you're going to have to bear with me. I'm visually watching you stand right now and raising your right hand. And you okay. to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but your truth. So help you, God. Yes. And um, Mohammed, have you been a pharmacist manager before? No. Heather? No, the, uh, it's my first time. As, pardon me? It's my first time. I've never been a, a pharmacy manager before. 
Heather, could um, has he signed up um, as a pharmacy manager? I know we're not doing them in person, but they still have to do them um, online, correct? Yes. Heather? Heather? Can you I hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, right? sorry. Um, That's okay. Yeah, he he does have the six month experience to become a manager. Okay, good. So um, he 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 applied. He just hasn't appeared before the board. We'll do that later. Okay, very good. Um, another question: Is there any physician ownership in this pharmacy, Mohammed? No. And is any computer terminal? register point of sale system or any system that can look up patient specific information going to sit outside of the licensed pharmacy area no okay very good now um, i'm going to turn you over to commissioner parbray and commissioner chisholm who will have some questions on your application commissioners okay hi can you hear me Angela? yes hi I commissioner can. Right. good morning Good morning. Uh, uh, can you just give us a, a describe a lo location of your pharmacy within this building? It looks like it's a sweet pharmacy in a medical office building. Yes. So is it uh, the build there is a many corporate drive buildings. So one of the corporate drive building is four corporate drives. So in that building on the first floor, uh, we have a suite number one ninety eight. And uh, it's just when you enter into the building, uh, there is a lobby, and after lobby, there is a uh, there is an aisle on your right, and then on right, there is a this suite number one ninety eight in that building. All right, I, I think it's important right. to include that suite number in your address. It's not on the application. Just want to make sure it uh, is on. You know, so. Okay, we will we will do that. Okay. I note down and I will I will I will uh, add into this uh, thing. Yes, Commissioner. Is, is this in Shelton? So I'm, I'm, it's in Shelton, right? This is in Shelton. Okay, so I'm I'm very yeah. familiar with this building. So the entrance is an entrance off the street, or is it an entrance into a lobby off the street? So one entrance if you see the map is the uh, is the from the lobby from the and the one is from the outside of the building as well if you see the other side is uh, is uh, we have a both side access in that pharmacy one is from our side for the public and one from the inside of the building as well right that's your exit out the back uh, the top of the, the top of the picture yeah, this the, the top of the picture is the outside of the building. Uh, we have access that people can come inside the pharmacy from the outside as well. So the other entrance, which which shows over here, it's in the lobby, is in the, within the building, but there is access from the outside as well. Where we put the board of pharmacy outside. We put the board on the other side, which is outside of the building, and we put the board that pharmacy is inside, and people can come in there. Basically, it has two points of entry, correct? Yeah, two points of entry, sir. Okay. And this is a first floor location. Sorry. First floor location in this in this building. Uh, the first one is from outside of the building. No, no, no. Is this on the first floor of the building? Yeah, first floor. First floor. Yes, first floor. Okay, so in uh, looking at the rest of the drawing, you do have everything labeled appropriately in terms of what we look for in terms of sink, safe, fridge. Um, obviously, there's no restrooms in this pharmacy. Yes, we use we use the restroom of the building because on the first floor there is a common restroom for all the first floor people. So, if the pharmacist needs to use the restroom, the pharmacy is locked. Yes, definitely. Okay, so you got you got two locations, so you're locking both those doors if the pharmacist leaves that leaves that pharmacy. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Debbie, anything you see? It, this is very straightforward, great drawing, and I I know the building very well. I actually used to live 
in that uh, corporate drive several years ago. Oh. Okay, good. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty pretty straightforward. I don't see any problems. Right. Nope. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you so Thank much, Commissioner. Thank, Thank, Thank you. you so much. Okay. Our next contestant is Pharmacy Relocations, Cornell Scott Hill Health Center from Columbus Avenue to Columbus Avenue. Is Catherine in the house? Hi, this is Catherine. Can you hear me? I can. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning. Catherine, please raise your right hand. All right. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Um, I know you've been a pharmacist manager for quite a while. Um, is yep. there any physician ownership in this pharmacy? No. No. And, um, well, it's a trailer, so I can skip the computer terminal because the whole trailer. This is a <laughs> total different meaning of going mobile, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. Yes. So my my uh, my assumption is you're remodeling the big farm is the pharmacy making it larger and you need to be in the trailer for a while. That's correct. They've been doing major renovations within the health center. This is the last phase. Okay. Um, and we discussed with the contractors trying to do it with the pharmacy in place. And I just did appropriate security, let alone sanity. OK. Very good. I'll let Commissioner Carbray and Commissioner Chisholm take over. Commissioner Carbray. Thank you. Uh, help us with this drawing because I have to admit this drawing is really <laughs> kind of a sketch compared to what we just saw in the last presentation. Correct. Um, I'm, yes. Really, it's really not, not a, it's really not a good drawing. I have to admit uh, for us to try to review this. I see some of the things in place, but walk us through how these patients come into this trail. Okay. So I don't have the visual that you do, so I'm going from the sketch, which I confess it's not good. I had to do it myself, and I didn't get the dry diagrams very far in advance of the deadline. Uh, we had planned to do this in March, but something intervened. So um, I included some photographs of the actual trailer that we will be getting. It's not on site yet. So um, in the front, there are two sets of doors. One set has uh, a ramp for um, uh, access, and then on the far left, there is another door. Um, unless someone needs a wheelchair or the ramp access, our plan is that they will come in on the door on the right and leave the door on the left. Um, we'll have a space in the front for patients to come in. We'll have an intake window and a dispensing window. The pharmacy bench will run between those. We'll probably also have some additional space um, in the left-hand side to the left of the bathroom. We'll have a consulting room on the right, which will have an access for patients and then also an access for the pharmacist to go into the consulting room. Um, we have the safe and the refrigerator in the right rear corner. We have our... Um, I hesitate to call it a compounding area. It's basically to reconstitute oral liquid antibiotics. That will be, um, we'll have a counter next to the sink and we'll probably have the antibiotics and the water dispenser on shelving above that. And then um, on the far left, we'll have some lockers for staff belongings. We'll probably, we'll have um, shelving up for the medication and we'll have, um, We'll have space to store minimal amounts of things. The majority of our vials and our prescription labels will be still housed in the cage in the basement of our main building, as will the patient bathroom area. So, um, I, guess, I guess the biggest question is, how are the patients separated from the pharmacy department? I don't see it in this drawing. It seems like a one big open space. No, okay, I apologize for that. No, what I've allowed for is about nine feet of space for the person to come in, and that will allow for some social distancing and perhaps a chair or two. Um, and the rest of it will be pharmacy. It will be walled off and secured. Um, of course, the alarm system will be on the entire building when we are closed. And we generally have at least two pharmacists, so there's no real reason for it to be closed other than when we are uh, not open at all. But in this drawing, you don't show that. Am I correct? I'm not seeing that in the drawing. 
Um, well, I I don't see any I don't see any separation. I just see a door off to the left inside the department. Looks uh -huh. like a, I see a twenty five foot dispensing bench. Right. That would right. be behind behind that line. And I put the two RX windows. That will be a wall uh, between the public and the pharmacy staff with two windows for dispensing and for intake. Okay, so then the patient is just within that nine by twenty foot area. Correct. Yes. Yes. So, so over over where there's a door leading over to where to where it says lockers. That's all non-patient accessible area, correct? Correct, correct. The consulting room on the right will be accessible to the patients, but everything else will not. Yeah, no, I understand that. It's just, it's just that part to the left that was really kind of not drawn, you know, where I saw it being totally closed off. But now, now that you've described it to me, I can, I can see it. Does it make sense? I apologize. I, it's not part of my major skill set. Yeah, no, it's, it's just it's helpful when we have drawings that are really kind of you know, a little bit more accurate, a little bit more definitive, but now that you've described it, I, I can see it better. Okay. So, yeah. Kathy, I have a uh, question for you. Like, how many okay. um, patients do you think can fit in that 9 by 25 foot waiting area with social distancing? We, um, we rarely have multiple patients at any given time. A substantial amount of our business, um, we have people on MedSync, so we have them scheduled to come in to pick up at a specific time. Also, we've been doing curbside delivery. Um, and what we do is we try, as we get new prescriptions electronically from the patients who are being seen right in the building, we fill those right away so as people come in, it's ready and they can take it and leave. Um, we basically want to discourage people from waiting is, is our major issue. And how long do you plan to be in the trailer? I'm hopeful that it will be no more than three months. Okay. Have one last question. Can you talk a little bit about, looks like uh, the back doors. So you have one door to the top left of the way the picture is on my screen and then two on the bottom left. Can we talk a little bit about what the security looks like on, the, on those doors. Okay, the, um, on the top of the diagram, it says optional door location. I don't believe that there is a door in that area. Um, and the other back door would be basically closed and locked. That to me would be an emergency exit only if staff were not able to go out the front. Okay, so that would not be how they get in and out on any no. given. Okay. No, no. My my idea is that they would basically come up the door on the right in the front, turn off the alarm system to go in, and then set up for the day. And the other benefit is this will be in our parking lot, and we will have security on site as we do. We also have a number of cameras on trained onto the trailer area because it's our parking lot, and we'll um, have the same camera system in the trailer that we currently have inside the pharmacy. And those are monitored remotely by our security staff. Okay. And those, and all those doors will have alarms, the back door. Oh, the entire trailer. Yeah, we'll just, once the trailer is closed, we will just alarm the perimeter and that'll be it. Catherine, this is Angelo DeFazio. Um, Catherine, is, um, is it 24 seven security? You know, a trailer full of drugs in a parking lot, you know, after hours is. Right. Um, they are not physically on site when we are not in the building. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, they come in early and they close up. So they are not on site probably after, probably an hour after we close. Okay. Um, I can't remember, but, there's, there's a cage there, right? The, is there a gate that closes the parking lot? I can't remember. No, not not the parking lot where we will be located. We have a parking lot across the street that does have a, a fencing around it. Would it, I'm sure the contractors could put up fencing around the um, the trailer. I mean, it, it, it's not required, but obviously you as the pharmacist manager, you know safety is a major issue. If you think that that oh, yes. will improve safety, I would recommend it. You know, mm -hmm. we can't tell you to do that. 
but we can say that you know a trailer sitting in an open parking lot um, being monitored only via online. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about how secure I feel about that. That's all. Well, I I will say that the police are incredibly responsive to us. Good. Um, yeah, we have a very good working relationship with the New Haven Police. Um, and, and in terms of the integrity of the product, um, the trailer is going to have air conditioning, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Which we will have control over, so we can just set it to stay steady overnight. This is some trailer. I want to take a vacation in it. Look at the size of this. Well, I, I haven't physically walked into it yet, um, but our contractors have also assured me that they will put internal walls anywhere I want them. Um, the sink area was actually a second bathroom, which we absolutely don't need. And I said, we cannot compound in a bathroom. So you're going to have to remove everything, the walls, the toilet, et cetera, and build us a counter. And they're very happy to do that. They're just thrilled that they don't have to work around us during the renovation. Any other questions, commissioners? No, I'm no. good. No, I'm good. I think it's fine. Uh, and like always on a relocation like this, in particular with a trailer, Catherine, you'll have to do a complete inventory or schedule drugs, make sure somebody else witnesses it, even though it's even mm -hmm. just going in a parking lot, it has to be right. locked under your supervision, then it has to be reopened mm -hmm. by you, counted yeah. again, and put away, so nothing well, gets lost or diverted in the process. You know, we'll, we'll basically have the pharmacy staff there for the moving portion. Nobody else is going to move the pharmacy but us. Right, and, and you'll be the purveyor of the scheduled drugs moving across, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, any other questions? No. Good luck, Catherine. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. And thank okay. you, Heather, for your assistance with this. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, let me now head to our next item. Pharmacy Remodels, CDS number 2572, Holly Lane, Stratford, Connecticut. Genevieve? Good morning. Good morning, how are you? Commissioner Carberry? I'm very good, how are you? Good, thank you. Okay, so um, we will be remodeling um, the pharmacy in store 2572 um, beginning in August. And essentially, um, there's just going to be some minor movements uh, with the safe that's um, underneath verification spot number one. Um, and then the other additional safe, which is located uh, within the bays, um, that will slightly be moved as well when they're adjusting the shelving. And then we will be adding a consultation room um, with an additional door that they will have access directly from the pharmacy. Um, that will be locked. Uh, you can't access it, um, you know, from externally. So um, that's really the the only thing. We're not moving the gates or the sinks or anything like that. Yeah, this is this is probably the third or fourth we've seen in the last few months mm -hmm. uh, of this consulting room. And I mean, it's, it's cookie cutter. Uh, I don't see any issues with this at all. None. Commissioner Chisholm. Yep, we're fine. Very good. Thank you, Genevieve. Thank you so much. CVS Pharmacy number 692. Jacob? Hello, good morning. Good morning. Um, good morning. 692 actually um, was at the board meeting on 1120. So this is actually just an update to that remodel that was formally approved and completed. Um, in this case, what we're looking to do on July 6th is raise up the waiting bin um, from 60 inches to 84 inches to accommodate uh, the increased volume of the store and a um, just really what we're seeing as far as trends since the remodel. And we're adding a Uniweb backsplash above just to the right of the drop off area. Um, small, just to add additional shelving that will accommodate some of the additional inventory that we've received. No structural changes, no door changes. Um, nothing that will change the actual layout of the pharmacy. Jacob, thank you, but I, I'm questioning and I'm asking the commissioners and Heather, did this have to appear before the board? Or it, just doesn't sound, it doesn't, no, it doesn't no, sound like no. it. Doesn't Jake, sound like I, it. Thanks for putting up with all our technical difficulties, but I, from what you described, 
you, we, we don't you don't need board approval for increasing your shelving space. If I'm being honest with you, when I was sent the invite for this, I questioned it too and just wanted to comply. But I, no, I feel that, the same way. That, no, thank you. Because and to be frank, you know the CVS plans have so much detail on them. It's very difficult to know what's changing and what isn't changing because of the small print. So, you know, if that's all that changed on this diagram, we appreciate you being here and I know you how to work for it, but back to work, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, thank right. you so much. Thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Um, okay. Connecticut, nice Phar Connecticut Pharmacy, Allison. Remodel Connecticut Pharmacy, Norwalk, Connecticut. Allison, I know you're in the house. I talked to you before. Maybe she's on mute. Um, yeah, try to unmute, star? Allison. I think it's star six star if you're on the phone. It is. That's how I got in. There we go. Sorry, I was muted. Oh, there you go. Welcome, Allison. Thanks for having us. Okay, tell me what's going on. Tell us, Commissioner Carberry, Commissioner Chisholm. Um, yes, yeah. so basically what we are doing is um, previously we had two separate pharmacies in this location. One was a retail pharmacy um, that would just want to turn into more of a storage area for our other, the current pharmacy that is still open. So what we're looking to do is just add a new double door in the center wall, um, which will open up into the other side, um, which will give us access, our, our staff to just another bathroom. And then that's where we are going to store um, like our blisters, our vials, our labels and things, diaper, you know, just the storage room. Eventually we may make a break room for there, um, but not yet. Um, but that's about it. No medications will be stored over there. Everything's staying, you know, on the current pharmacy uh, on that side. It's really just that storage area. So, was that storage area a licensed pharmacy? You said you had two pharmacies. So, that's it, it, like it was a licensed pharmacy, yes. Um, that pharmacy um, closed about two years ago. I but it, it still has, um, you know, the alarm set up, still has all the cameras. Um, we're just trying to incorporate it so we can use, uh, we can gain some space. They're adding to their pharmacy footprint is what they're doing. Correct. Right. Yeah, I talked to Scott about this. So we're going to license that storage area is what you're asking. Under one license, right? That's correct. Right. right. It's going to be under. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if that is part of the licensed area, if you do need to store drugs in that area, you can because it is part of the licensed area. Correct. We have planned to just for security purposes and being able to visualize. You know, we don't want anything over there that um, you know doesn't have to be over there. It's just really uh, we're running out of space on this side, so it's going to help with that. And this is a simple one as well, but just adding a door. It's just adding, yeah. Yeah, and extra space. Yeah, yeah. yeah I have no issues with this one. Any, have, any other questions? All right, thank you, Allison. Thank you guys so much. Have okay, good, good. Going back to the top of the agenda then. Um, I will accept the motion for new pharmacy application, corporate pharmacy in Shelton, Connecticut. Do I have a motion? Uh, motion to approve as presented. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Moving on to pharmacy relocation, Cornell Scott Hill Center Pharmacy. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve as presented. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? 
Motion passes. Pharmacy remodel number 2572, Stratford. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve as presented. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? So move. CVS pharmacy number 692. We're going to delete from the agenda. Um, not no motion needed. Um, Connecticut pharmacy, Norwalk, Connecticut. Um, do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve as presented. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved. Miscellaneous matters. Costco wholesaler. Tom? Are you in the house? I am here. I figured out how to unmute. There you go. Welcome aboard. So before Thank we you. get started, I know the commissioners had a chance to read the waivers and I'm sure there may have some questions on this. But before we get started, there wasn't a specific Costco associated with this. Is this a, a general waiver you're asking for all the Costco's and how many are there? Yes, and the answer is seven. So there's seven Costco yes. pharmacies and you're asking for the waiver for all seven. Correct. And are all seven identical? As far as this uh, subject, yes. That the Registered. registers are outside the license area. All right. One they're not the, exactly identical. They're not. Say it again, Tom. I'm sorry. They're not exactly identical. There's been some upgrades. Uh, uh, where we have a roll down gate now and some of the newer ones. But as far as the register stations uh, being outside the, reg the registered area, yeah, the, they're, they're not. So that's what's causing all the issues. OK, so I, I'd like you if you could send to Heather um, the exact locations of all seven to go along with this waiver so that the waiver is oh, no. connected to individual units and not just a a blanket waiver to all the Costco's, you know, so that um, each unit is is identified for this waiver. That I'd ask you to do that for me. Um, commissioners, Not I know problem. you had a chance to look at the waiver. Do you have any questions um, on the answer, questions and answers to the waiver? No questions. So, so Angelo, I have a general question in, yes. in, in regarding waivers in general. I, yes. I, I feel like we're constantly waiving individual pharmacies. Is there an option for us to amend the regulation? Because yeah. they're all different. I think, yeah. I think we need to do something um, on a larger scale than you're not supposed to have the, you know, the terminal outside. Now we found that all these terminals are on, on the outside and as they trickle in, we waive them. Well, Deb, to, to be frank, I think that this isn't the norm and that this isn't something that we condone or we want these registers or patient information sites available outside of the demise pharmacy here. Um, and these units, slipped by us because we approved these designs, but it slipped us because it wasn't very clear that these registers would also serve as almost quasi patient lookup and in some cases patient fill stations where the patient information is inputted and then filled in the back. So it kind of slipped by us. So uh, and 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 so the waiver is the most efficient way to do it. I don't think that this is going to be a norm for people who are going to, oh, we'll just put the register outside the pharmacy department and then we'll apply for a waiver. I don't think that's what the intention is. And correct me if I'm wrong, commissioners and Heather, uh, uh, getting a regulation change or a statute, um, I guess we can put an input to that if that's what we want. Not a fan of giving a carte blanche to go ahead and put a register outside the pharmacy department if you want it. I'd rather do it this way because this way, when a control agent enters that particular unit, they have the waiver answers in their hand 
And if something deviates from that, then that's actionable item by the department. That's the way I understood. Commissioners, if you have any comments about that. So Angela, uh, you're saying not to do a regulation and just continue with the waiver uh, because the regulation process would be too difficult. Well, not too difficult, but I mean, I guess we can we can um, tell the ask the Department of Consumer Protection to to try to get a regulation change. But what are we asking for? That it's okay to have a register with patient information outside the pharmacy department? Or outside the licensed well, would, pharmacy, yeah. but I think that's what yeah, we're would, doing. We when we give a waiver, we're saying it's so it's okay. No, it's, we're it's, not it's, saying it's okay. We're saying it's okay with the answers that have been given, so that there is an actionable item if that particular um, um, pharmacy breaks, doesn't comply with their waiver. Right, but that yeah. was the whole idea about the waiver and the answers. If an agent goes in there and they find that it's not a locked compartment and that that it doesn't time out in 10 minutes or that, um, you know, they're able to access patient information when someone wasn't looking and the waiver said that they couldn't, that's an actionable item by the department. What are you suggesting that we, we ask the department to create a regulation that just allows it? That, that makes the same amendment that we would allow for the waiver. So if we decide that you're going to have, you know, 10 minutes is the is the cutoff that the terminal has to shut off or whatever parameters that we put so that it's clear for everyone who has something like this or if they're building a new pharmacy and they want to do something similar. They're clear guidelines as opposed to one offs coming in and no, I can do 30 minutes. No, I can do five. I can do 10 minutes. I just I feel there needs to be some type of guideline so that an agent can go in and they know that, hey, this is the guideline for everyone. So basically have set answers and they have to follow those answers. That, that that's that's um, that's something I'll, I will bring that up with the department and see if there's any hurdles to that. That may not be a bad idea. How do the other commissioners feel about? No, I, I agree. I agree with Deb. I agree with Debbie Angel. I think we should at least have a discussion with the department. Yeah. Uh, to get their get their thoughts on it, how they feel about policing it, and and having something codified uh, to make it easier for the department and also for us having to deal with these waivers going forward. Yeah, so that, that, I agree with that, Debbie. I agree that, with that. Yeah, now that you explained it that way, that's not a bad idea. So basically when they apply for a new application, they're agreeing to whatever the regulation is in terms of this waiver. There won't be a waiver that if you do the following and you follow the following, then you can put that particular locked system that closes in 10 minutes or shuts off in 10 minutes outside the pharmacy. I see right. what you're saying. If you choose to do that. And if I think you choose to do that. I think when we do a waiver, I, I think there needs to be some type of follow up point because we we don't know that can it can change. Maybe, you know, they get new software download and it's not 10 minutes. Um, yeah. And maybe an agent doesn't come in for two years and they don't see it. And and we're we are putting these in place so that we can protect patient privacy. Yeah, uh, Chairman, this is Mary. I think when um, when this whole idea was, um, you know, proposed to us about the waiver, um, I, I believe we had quite an extensive yeah. dialogue yeah. that uh, it was going to soon be, you know, right. uh, standard practice. So if if this is the point we're at, I agree with um, Commissioner Chisholm that you know we need to just kind of make this a little bit more hardwired and uh, that accountability and um, the inspections and and all of that in the spirit of protecting the patient's uh, privacy and information. I agree. It all started with the targets. And, um, right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. And now it's big Y, Costco, right? Um, 
No, that's interesting. I, I will. I'll, I'll certainly bring that up with the department and and see whether or not there is any action that's required by our board, and and if we believe that there's acceptable answers and non acceptable answers to the waiver questions, maybe we can get together and and create create parameters that we believe are safeguards public um, information, safeguards patient information, and present it to to the department and see whether or not regs get changed. Now, Brian, you may have some familiarity with the regulation changes. Um, to get a regulation changed, what are what are some of the steps involved in it? Is it is it very complicated or is it, you know, could could you help yeah, us out I, with that a little bit? Uh, sure, I've been kind of trying to do as my mom taught me and listen on the first occasion of uh, my first day of class here. So <laughs> not not jump in. Uh, don't and worry. Put on any old it's hat. Been, Brian. As hey, much as I'm we're, hey Brian, we're online. It's so, Brian. We're online. It's only a pass fail class. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, um, certainly all valid points. Um, the the regulation. And I all do deference. I mean, I do think that probably first and foremost, you're you're right that you should speak to the department, um, the you know the director of drug control and the legal department about kind of their wishes as to what the landscape is now. But in general, the the regu to change a regulation, it does um, take some time, um, the better part of a year plus. So uh, you know to go through the proposal and um, review process through all the, the, you know, the agency, the governor's office, the attorney general, and then the regular regulations review committee at the, uh, the legislature. So, but um, I, you know, I do agree with the commissioners and Commissioner Chisholm who made the point that um, there should be some type of standard that everyone can rely on and that enforcement could be uniform and the agents can have a clear understanding of what they are what the what the rules are when they go in um, to inspect these pharmacies. Thank you for that, Brian. And I think that's why the drug control came up with a waiver because of the long process to get the regs changed in this. But I will bring it up with um, Rod Marriott about coming up with concrete um, parameters for this waiver. Then again, we could always say, sorry, we're not going to do any more waivers. I, th I think that's within our realm if we don't feel comfortable with them going forward. But we can't do anything about the ones we have uh, passed. Um, so that that's that's um great question, great advice. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, for Debbie and Rick, for bringing in Mary. Um, any other comments on that? Hearing none. I'll accept the motion to approve Costco wholesale waiver as requested for the seven units um, in anticipation of identification of those seven units being sent to the department. Do I have a motion to approve? Move to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I'm opposed. One opposed, I believe that was Commissioner Chisholm. Correct. And any abstentions? Pass, the motion passes, thank you. Now we're gonna turn it over to the Commissioner Inguante show. She will have <laughs> take center stage for the rest of the meeting until the very end. Um, Commissioner Inguante, um, request for continued education. Very interesting word next to all of them for the first time, the word webinar. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, thank you, Chairman. Uh, <laughs> you'll see um, on the agenda there are five uh, separate um, requests for approval um, for CEUs. Um, all of these have come from um, uh, various uh, team members of the drug control agents, and they have submitted complete applications, um, CVs of speakers, and program content, and I would recommend uh, that we approve all five of these requests for continuing education. Any questions, Commissioner? Hearing none, 
Do I accept? Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions, hearing none. All five CE program approvals pass. Now again, Commissioner Iguante, request for non-resident non-resident pharmacies approvals. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so if you recall, we have not been um, kind of suspended this for the last couple of months while we were getting acclimated to, um, you know, re reviewing um, the voluminous documents that come with these um, electronically. Uh, so at this point in time, um, you will see these are all of the submissions we have. Um, a couple of them are from the past past couple of months. Um, what you're going to see, though, is there's there's quite a few denials, um, and I am citing uh, the need for 797, 795 inspection with the non-sterile compounding. Um, I have verified um, with Director Marriott that his agents, um, on a consistent, sustained basis, inspect for 795 um, all of the pharmacies in Connecticut that are engaging in non-sterile uh, compounding. So the way we have been approaching the out-of-state residents uh, pharmacy uh, request has been to have them at a minimum uh, comply to what our standards are here in Connecticut because they will be filling prescriptions for the residents of Connecticut. So with the 795, it, it really focuses on um, a, a few categories. Um, you know, they focus those inspections on the categories of the compounds that are being being manufactured, being um, you know again compounded for patients, um, the personnel um, requirements, um, PPE, the facility requirements, uh, what the the compounding. Um, selection is beyond use dates and then uh, documentation. So all of the pharmacies that were requesting uh, non-sterile compounding that did not have any mention of that type of an inspection in the documentation they provided, um, I, I denied. And um, Heather has made requests for them to provide that uh, supporting documentation. Um, so aside from that, um, that is the only footnote I wanted to uh, take a couple minutes to explain to everyone and um, you have my report as submitted uh, for your review um, and I would recommend that um, you consider approving these recommendations as I have uh, listed here on the report. Your denied pen was busy Mary. <laughs> I'm sorry. I said your denied <laughs> pen was quite busy. Eight denials. It, it, Very good. <laughs> it was, you know, I mean, some of those stuff, you, you know, and you, you see it every time, right? Sometimes people are just a little sloppy in their uh, application uh, submission. But um, the 795 thing, it's um, it's getting to be kind of pervasive. So, um, and after I spoke to Rod, it, it really sounds like, you know, um, everyone needs to be on the same page with that from a standards perspective. And I think it's extremely important and, um, you know, to scrutinize a lot of these out of state, not to be difficult in the licensing, but we don't have an agent that can visit that site. So it's, it, uh, it's exactly. the that's on the paper. So true. Right. And that's a big, that's a, that's a pretty big deal because we can't visit that, that site. And if you're going to participate in 795, you, you know, we really have to follow these parameters. So I appreciate all the diligence that you put into this, Mary. Oh, thank you. I'll accept them. Any other questions from any of the commissioners? I'll accept the motion to accept the non-resident pharmacies um, as presented by Commissioner Guante. So move. Accept. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Non-resident pharmacy passes. Thank you, Mary. Thank you for all your diligence on both the CE and the non-resident pharmacies.
Um, before the um, acceptance of the Commission of Pharmacy meetings for last month, I wanted to add Heather in. There's been some changes to the forms and the website. Um, Heather, you want to let the board know and the public know? Yes, thank you, Angelo. I just wanted to let you guys know that um, we have recently put up online applications for all change forms for pharmacy, in-state pharmacies and non-resident pharmacies. So change of managers, change of locations, ownership, officers and directors can all now be applied online. There's no, they don't have to use the paper form. Super. Yeah. That'll change a lot. That'll be great. Good. Any questions for Heather? Hearing none, um, hopefully the commissioners had a chance to look at the um, board minutes from last month, virtually board minutes from last month. Um, any omissions or changes? Hearing none, I'll accept a motion for approval of the board minutes. Move to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Extensions? So moved. Any other good and welfare that any of the board members would like to bring to light? Hearing none, I'll accept the motion for adjournment. Move to adjourn. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Have a great, great day, guys. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jason. Bye-bye. Bye now.